some things change a lot, but some things don't change much at all. Hi, I'm Pierre Rademacher, and I've been in town since about 1972. I came to San Luis Obispo to teach at Cal Poly. I'm an amateur historian. I love San Luis Obispo's history, and uh, I'd like to share some of that with you. What I want to do is go back to the 19, uh, the 1880s, I should say, and this first photo is a compilation of then and now, and it shows that some things change a lot, but some things don't change much at all. The landscape is still the landscape. And one thing that you do notice when you look at today's picture here on the right is how important the, the tree structure is in our downtown. We've, we've planted an urban forest here. We've changed the landscape by planting trees. Talking about the early days, this is Higuera Street in the 1880s. Off to the left there is the Commercial Bank building, which today is Fanny Wrappers, for those of you who know uh, where that corner is. And you can see the street's not paved. And if you look closely at the storefronts, you'll find that they all have screen doors because they need them for the flies. The flies were horrible downtown, and anyone who thinks the good old days were great uh, doesn't know what it smelled like. And here it is a little later. This is about 1908, and by this time, uh, the building we're sitting in here on the, on the right side of the photo, that's the Johnson Block, had been built. Um, all masonry had replaced all of those wooden storefronts. On the left, the, uh, the commercial bank has been expanded now. It's a bigger building. The Mangle building is built. Pretty much everything there exists today. On the far left is a building that looks a lot different than what you'd imagine. That's where the Weinman Hotel is today, but it doesn't look the same. There's an illustration of that building. It was called the Cool Tree Block. It was a commercial building. And this building was there for quite a while, and then in the 1920s, they decided they wanted another story on it. So they took down a good part of the second story and rebuilt it. It's not a different building, it's the same building remodeled. But it was done uh, in the same location using the same footings and the same basic footprint. Moving up the street a little bit, but you can see uh, along this block, which is all single story today, is many multiple story buildings. They've all come down. Here's what's there today. Um, some taller buildings, but they're not two-story. This is looking the other way. Now here you can see Union Bank on the right. And it had a neoclassical architecture. Today it's made into a Spanish-looking building. This is another shot of Hydera Street. And the rest of the street, all the way up to the corner, are all multi-story. Take a look at that. It's quite a few, and there's very few of those related uh, exist today. Here now, you see the beginnings of modernism. Look at over the left. The Woolworth store is plastered over the brick that used to be part of the Johnson Block. This is a little bit later probably about 1959, and now you see even more modernism, more plaster going over the existing historical architecture. Look at the prominence of the grade to the town. Uh, you really had a sense of where you were in the landscape. This is farther up. Now, J.C. Penney, this is the where Ross is today. Montgomery Ward was next door there, and that's where Beverly's is. And the point I want to make about this is most of our downtown merchants were chains. We had uh, Montgomery Ward, Penny's, Sears, National Dollar Store. We had Flourish of Shoes. We had just about anything you can think of. There were three drugstores on this intersection alone. That's really what grew the downtowns. Um, Woolworths was a big store down the street. And so the argument that uh, chains are bad, I don't buy that. I think that we need chains because they have the, the promotional budgets that uh, allow the, the small independents to hang on as well. But here you can see Woolworths. It's got a different sign now. Uh, the entire block now has been plastered over. The Johnson block has been modernized. And you think, God, what, who would do such a thing? Well, the mentality was that old was bad and new was good. You know, we were entering the space race at this time. This is about 1963, to put it in perspective and everyone wanted things to be modern. This photo is I'm putting in, the trees are growing. Take a look, they're looking uh, a little better. You can get a real good saw shot of Sears and Firestone and so forth, um, which is now Firestone Grill, same location. But this is a telephoto photo, but the grade is still a very prominent feature of the downtown. Here's the uh, San Luis Obispo High School marching band in about 1967 or 68, judging by the trees. And today, this exact same shot, we planted trees and obscured most of our uh, connection with the landscape. And I love the trees, they're great, and everyone else does too, but they do, you pay a price for it. Uh, the other thing it does is it hides bad architecture, which isn't such a bad thing. So you get the sense that there's, there's kind of a homogeneity to the downtown that really doesn't exist because the trees uh, connect everything well. But all in all, it's a great town, we love it. And if there's a message to take away is that nothing stays the same, everything changes. And uh, learn to embrace it and, uh, and try to guide it in a positive way instead of a negative way.